Hey, so I've been doing a rebuild on my Kit Fox. It's been 22 years that I've owned it. Uh, I got it in about 2000. It was built in 1993 and uh, got all the paint done, uh, engine in. Today it's the windshield. So I took my old windshield off. This is it. You can see it sitting here on the bench. And I made a template off it by screwing it down to the bench. Now my windshield is fairly thick. And you can see, even though it's been flattened to make the template, it's still got the curvature to it. So you, I really had to fasten it down with penny washers. And when I did that, uh, just flexing it flat, it actually shattered in a few places. I don't know if this was preformed polycarbonate because I know you could buy them like that. I don't think so because the shape is, is um, uh, a little crude. <laughs> but uh, anyways. So this was one eighth inch and I just got it from a local kind of building supply, home hardware type place. Uh, this is the template I made. So I took that and I fastened it on that table, paper underneath it and then traced the template. And this is what I, I mean by, you can see, you know, the bevel on this end, the bevel on that end are two completely different distances. This one's almost twice as long. Uh, so it's, it's definitely custom. I don't think it was purchased as a poly, uh, uh, as a pre-built one. So anyways, uh, my good friend Craig lent me his uh, so I could compare his. He took his off when it cracked and he replaced it. And like I was saying, I was using 1 8 inch. This is actually, um, I think it's 3 32nd, which is uh, 90 thou. And you can see the difference. Like, look at it. It, uh, it pretty well goes right flat. Uh, mine won't even go flat. So. This one I'm putting on is quite a bit thicker, and I'm kind of worried when I bend it that it's actually going to break up here, but I'll, I'll get some heat to it, and I'll see. Now, one thing, the 1 8 inch is definitely going to be better if you, if you get a Canada goose coming at you at 100 miles an hour, whereas this 3 32nd or 90 thou is a, quite a bit thinner, but then you'd save a lot of weight with this. But they're making face masks right now for PP, uh, personal protection equipment for the virus, so this stuff's getting pretty hard to uh, buy right now. So anyways, we're going to uh, cut this guy out. Uh, we're going to put him on, click them in place, bend them, and hopefully it doesn't shatter. Okay, get in there. Uh, it's all click out in. Uh, going off the old windshield meant that uh, I could drill all the holes, and miraculously enough, everything actually lined up. So I'm just click out in here. This will be the big one, but I think it's actually going to work, even with the one eighth. You just have to come down, pull that in, and I'll do it slowly, and I'll get some heat on it. But that's the general idea. Uh, just to pull it around. Even one eighth inch thick looks like it's going to bend okay. Okay, windshield back off the airplane. Uh, what I did is I measured just to make sure all of the cutouts were right around the spar and around where the bolt uh, for the front uh, spar attached pin is. Um, what I found really handy was this guy. It's sort of like an oversized Dremel tool that you can stick in a drill and I ended up rounding off all the edges. I cut this initially with a two or a one inch hole saw and then went around. I've been going around with sandpaper too and beveling all of the edges and the idea is to take off any nicks and any stress risers. The other thing I'm doing is I've taken a feed burring tool. So I've got that on my drill and going top and bottom on these, these holes. And I'm just taking the burrs off them. Again, taking all the stress risers out of the holes and uh, trying to make it so that, you know, I don't get anything that takes off and turns into a crack. So it's going to take me a while to deburr it all. And then uh, now it goes back on and just kind of final fitting. And again, when you drill the holes, you have to drill them oversize. And don't use a standard metal or wood drill bit. Uh, get yourself a Lexan or plexiglass drill bit. They've got a much, much finer angle where a normal drill is like that. They're more like this. And when they go in, they won't catch the edge. Um, otherwise, you could crack it. Uh, and I've heard even if you get the drill holes right, in your first landing, you'll probably crack it. So anyways, uh, just some final finishing and back on the airplane and uh, put it on for good. And now, I got the one side on. It's a bugger. Uh, it's a lot of bending. I've been taking a heat gun and heating up the area just to kind of give it a little bit of flexibility. I'm not sure if it helps or not. So on this one, what I did is I clecoed it in at the bottom. That one I couldn't get a cleco on, so I tie wrapped it. This one I'm actually going to put a long screw on, and I'm going to try and bend the, or pull it in with the screw. And you got to kind of pull the flashing back to get it around the tubing there. 
Uh, alternatively, you know, I, I give it some heat just to try and, you know, get some flexibility into it. Anyways, almost there, two screws to go. This has been brutal. Uh, finally, I remembered somebody said ratchet straps, and that's my saving grace. So I cranked up a couple of ratchet straps. Now I got the holes actually lining up. I can put the bolts through, and I'm pretty well done. Holy cow, what a bear uh, trying to get this uh, eighth inch to bend properly. But uh, yeah, ratchet straps kind of uh, kind of helped out. Clecos are really handy too. Okay, so here we go. 20 hours later, I got my new windshield in. Probably could do it in half the time if I had to do it again. Now that I know what I'm doing. Uh, saving grace was the ratchet straps to to pull the windshield in uh, on both sides, so you can get these side pieces on. Uh, the other thing, over drilling the holes so that you've got thermal expansion. Deburring the holes and using a Black sand. drill, a uh, couple of handy things that I found out. But anyways, it's in. I uh, still so got a couple of Clecos. Uh, mine's fastened down actually with screws and lock nuts, uh, so it takes forever uh, to get them all in because you don't have hardly any room to work with. But you know, all in all, I'm pretty happy. Uh, it fit perfectly with the cowl. I couldn't believe it. Every hole on this lined up almost perfectly. All in all, uh, she looks pretty good. So. Again, one eighth inch. Uh, if you did it with 90 thou, it would be so much easier. Um, but you know, if I get hit with a Canada goose, uh, I'd probably be glad I got the one eighth. Anyways, uh, got any questions? Let me know.